Matthew 5 verse 9, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Uh, there's a famous picture of John F. Kennedy in the Oval Office of the White House. He's uh, signing some important looking documents and underneath the desk is his little boy, John F. Kennedy Jr. And he's playing there without a care in the world. No one else could get into that room unless they were incredibly important. And if they did manage to have an audience with the president, it would only be for a matter of minutes and they would be on their best behavior. The son of the president, though, can waltz in and out. He belongs at the very heart of power. Others would call his father Mr. President. He just calls him Daddy. Well, the Apostle John writes this. He says, See what great love, what great love the Father has lavished on us that we may be called the children of God, and that is what we are. See, our Father is the Emperor of the Universe. The Emperor of the Universe is our Father. How can this be? Well, we've already seen this truth. What Jesus is uniquely and originally, His people become in Him. He is the light of the world, so in Him we become the light of the world. He is the Son of God, and so He draws His people into Himself, that we might become children of the same Heavenly Father. We share in Christ's relationship with the Father. And children are peacemakers. Children are peacemakers. This, this holds true particularly in more traditional cultures. In family disputes, the eldest son especially would be the mediator. He would go out and broker a peace between feuding family members. Therefore, what does this beatitude tell us about Jesus and what does it tell us about ourselves? Well, Jesus as the Son of God, he is at heart, the peacemaker. He really has gone out from the, from the family home, from heaven itself, and he has come in order to broker a peace. In, uh, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, Paul says that God was pleased to have his fullness to dwell in Christ and through Christ to reconcile to himself all things, whether things in heaven or things on earth, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So Jesus was the peacemaker, and as peacemaker, he represents both parties, both warring parties. On the one hand, the fullness of God dwells in Jesus. On the other hand, the fullness of our wrath-deserving guilt fell on him, but he held us together. The cross was the place where wrath and mercy met. And as that blood poured down the cross, peace was brought. Peace was brought between man and God, between earth and heaven. Who else could save the world and reconcile it to the Father? Only the Son. It may be the job of the children to be peacemakers, but it is the glory of the Son of God to actually achieve eternal peace with God. So the Son of God is, of course, the great peacemaker. But what about us? As children of God, how are we meant to be peacemakers? Well, we are invited to declare Christ's peace to the world. We are peacemakers in Christ. So this verse here in Matthew 5, it's not primarily about earthly, political or military peace. It's not primarily about the United Nations. It's not saying that Tony Blair is a child of God because he brokered the Good Friday peace agreement over Northern Ireland. No, um, the real Good Friday agreement was the one paid for 2,000 years ago in the blood of Christ. The real peace is peace with God. Now, there might be a secondary application of this verse to the United Nations and, and to truth and reconciliation commissions. Yes, indeed, those might be earthly pictures of the peace that Christ has brought to us. And it's certainly a very Christ-like thing to do, to work for peace in the world. But it's the peace of Christ that we're primarily interested in here. Jesus, we must remember, did not broker a peace deal between Jerusalem and Rome. It wasn't that kind of earthly peace that he brought. That was not his mission. He makes peace with God. And we, adopted by him into his kind of life, we offer that kind of peace. Peace with God. We tell the world there's already been a Good Friday agreement. It has been signed in the blood of God the Son. It is secure. It is eternal. It is for you. Will you come home to the love of God? Will you be at peace with your Maker? 
You see, as you hold out this kind of peace to a warring world, then you are blessed. Then you are Christ-like. Then you are the children of God. Your chips off the old block. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. So today, why not pray for an opportunity, an opportunity to be blessed? Be on the lookout for an opportunity, an opportunity to declare the peace of Christ. Remember the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. God has reconciled him, us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, God making His appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, therefore, be reconciled to God. That is our life, reconciled and reconciling, at peace and peacemaking. That's the life of God's children. That's the blessed life.